We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and today we get to visit with Joe Curry, who is the head football coach for the St. Francis Fighting Saints. Coach, last season, 7-3 and three overall. The season was bookend with a couple of tough losses, but in the middle there, a seven-game winning streak. You were still playing meaningful games all the way through until the season came to an end. Tell us about 2022 and, and uh, about the spring as well this year. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on, Joe. I do appreciate it, first and foremost, and you promoting the University of St. Francis football team. I appreciate that. Um, our, our 2022 season was, uh, yeah, it, we, we suffered a, f- a couple bookend losses. Um, you know, would we look at it as, as being positive? Um, we didn't reach our goal that we wanted to be at, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I think you really get to saw or really got to see last year, um, the middle of our season where I think we hit our stride and showed everybody what we were capable of and what we can be capable of, um, not only through our season last year, but, you know, into uh, the 2023 season coming back. And, um, you know, I, I was proud of the guys, the way they fought. Um, but at the end of the day, we got to find a way to to win some of the tough games. And I think one of the things that's that, that has been great within our program is our kids expect to play in those games and they want to play in the national tech caliber top 25, top 10 games, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, uh, and they want to succeed in those and they expect to. So, you know, that's, that's always a good thing. And, and we're, we're getting used to that here over the past couple of years. And I hope that continues in 2023. Um, our spring ball went really well. Uh, you know, one of the great things this year um, as compared to last year, if you're going to imagine, so our, our quarterback, Sam Tumulty is a, um, is, is back-to-back players of the year in our league and uh, um, really just a dynamic player for us and, and, and does a lot of different things for us. Um, well, last, last spring, he also played baseball. So it was tough to go through a spring football, having your quarterback there for only half the time. And this past spring, we were able to schedule it to where, our quarterback was at every practice. So I feel like our offense really, um, you know, showed some great signs of improvement and, and doing some really, really good things. And the comfortability that, that Sam has, is now possessing um, and, you know, the, the, the strength of us uh, running the football, our offensive line and those sort of things, um, you know, really took off in the spring for us. So I can't wait to get back going here. Um, you know, in fall camp with our offense and, and our whole team. But, you know, um, I thought our offense did some really good things in, in the spring, and hopefully that catapults us into being a real serious contender here in 2023. Coach Sam Tumulty, a, a dual threat, obviously, as you just mentioned, football and baseball right there. And athletes like that are, are fantastic to have on, in a program to being able to do so many things. He's a dual threat just on the football field alone. He's able to pass the ball, run the ball, had a school record with 16 rushing touchdowns last season and really, I think, was uh, made his name known throughout all the NAI with what he was able to do on the field and lead the team so well. Again, passed the ball well, 11 passing touchdowns, but he was able to cross the goal line himself. So t- tell us a little bit more about him, a back-to-back All-American. Yeah, uh, like I said, Sam does a lot of things for us. And, and you know, you call him a dual threat. Uh, like you said, Sam also baseball. He won a gold glove last spring in baseball. Um, you know, he uh, is a, I'll just say it, he's a hell of a student. Um, he's, he's right around a 4.0 GPA. Um, he also won a national championship at track. It's at College of DuPage. So he's just the things that he does is, is amazing. And, um, you know, yes, our offense kind of starts, starts with him, but, you know, we got a lot of great weapons on our offense as well that, um, you know, Sam, you know, got a lot of the accolades last year, but he doesn't go anywhere with, with, you know, without our offensive line and our, and our, and our great running game um, started by Christopher Norton, who's our O line coach and, and those guys that he does up there uh, coaches up there. Um, do a heck of a job for us and really make everything go, you know, and, uh, um, and then Sam, obviously being a great athlete, that kind of helps too, but that also kind of helps us, you know, like you mentioned earlier in our passing game a little bit, because we do see large boxes, you know, we, we, we have, there's eight, nine men in the box trying to stop the run and, and all those things. So it kind of um, plays into our hands a little bit in the passing game. And that's a great thing to have. And that's why we love the fact that we do have a dual threat quarterback that can do both. Um, we think playing on 11 and 11 football is tough. 
you know, people that have quarterbacks that just sit back there and throw it everywhere, it's technically 11 on 10, you know, so the defense has the upper advantage. And any time that we can even back those numbers a little bit um, and, and put some athletes around Sam, which I believe we have, um, you know, we're going to be we're, we're, we're going to be pretty good on offense. Coach, you mentioned Sam and, and uh, had uh, is doing well in the classroom. You had 11 scholar athletes re- get recognized at the end of the season as well. And so clearly it's it's a program that's, uh, you know, finding its its place on the field, but also in the classroom too. If we stay with the offense just for a little bit longer, you talked about that offensive line then and what it's it's doing. Go through there and, and uh, mention those guys there in the trenches. Yeah, so um, so last year um, we had a great offensive line and, and we only, we're only going to miss – um, one of those guys this year, you know, so, and, and I'm just encouraged last year, we had so many things go on, go, go wrong with our offensive line. As far as injuries go early on, I believe it took us to week six before we started the same five. Um, and then it, it or started the same five back to back weeks. I think it was it took us to week six to get to that. And then, um, and then from there on, we kind of had our starters, you know, for the rest of the season, but, you know, even into spring football, um, what we were able to do last fall because we needed to and we had to, we built a ton of depth on our offensive line. There's actually people who started games for us um, in the past that might not start for us this year, and that's that's what I like about the competition that we have up there and 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 what we and what we're doing. Um, we got some some veteran leadership up there. Um, Peyton Bozy will be our starting tackle again. He's He's a multiple year starter for us and kind of an unsung hero for us. Um, He played really well for us last year, got hurt early in the year and then came back at the end and and played real solid for us. Um, We have some young guys up front. Uh, When Peyton Bozier got hurt, we started a true freshman who (laughs) this is kind of a funny story. He did not take one rep of offense with our offense. He's on scout team for the first three weeks of the year. And we practice on a Friday and on a Friday, one of our, um, one of our red shirt tailbacks decides to dive into the end zone and dive right into our start and tackles legs. And uh, he ended up, you know, rupturing, tearing a knee ligament and he was out like three, four weeks. So Friday, the day before a game, we started a guy at offensive tackle who had never taken a, never taken a snap for us in practice nowhere and ends up starting for us for the next four weeks and, and does a heck of a job for us. And, you know, his name's Matt Alston. We got him coming back and, I, Ashton Sorgi, who's a back-to-back year starter on the offensive line for us all conference last year, um, another great guy up there. And we got some other great young guys who, who you know, w- when we look at our offensive line and see the depth that we have up there, we're excited about it and because we have to be able to run the ball and able to compete in our league. Well, you, you are able to, to move the ball well. And the ground game solid for the Fighting Saints. We're here on uh, Midwest Sports Net I'm talking on the summit right now with Coach Joe Curry with the Fighting Saints from University of St. Francis. And I encourage you, please can subscribe to the channel and continue to watch the videos here. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, you look at the other side of the ball, too. Another player getting All American recognition for you last year. And there are a couple of players I did want to mention, but I want you to talk about those with Michael Johnson. Talk about his play for you. Michael Johnson is a unbelievable kid. I mean, he's. He's like he's like Sam Tumulty to our offense. Um, he does a lot for us, uh, and everybody knows it all starts up front. And we put him at the nose position up in the middle, and we're, we play a three man front, man. So he's so he's getting doubled and triple teamed every single play. And um, when he doesn't want to, he he can't be blocked. And um, you know I've I got asked this year, this past year, if he's one of the best defensive linemen we've had in the history of our school. And I think he's he's right up there with that. Um, just his motor just doesn't stop. And he just he, he he's just a great leader to our defense as well. And there's a reason why Sam and Mike are our captains of our team as well. You know, so that I mean, that goes without saying. But um, Michael does a it, it does a great job for us, makes our defense run um, and you know, we're looking for, for him to come back and have another dominating year for us as well. You know, if, if opposing coaches are, are tired of seeing the name Tumulty uh, when they are scouting your offense, uh, they have to be frustrated then when they look at your defense as well because you have another one there, uh, Scott Tumulty, who had another fantastic season for you and and uh, was recognized as a nominee for the Cliff Harris Award. Yeah, he had a, he had a great year for us. I'm surprised that he – 
you know, didn't get any all American or anything like that. He had had that in the back to back years, um, two previous years, you know, but uh, um, I, I just think he's using that as motivation for this year to come back and, and, and prove people wrong, which could be really scary, um, you know, but he's, he, he does a great job for our defense as well. Scotty does you know, anything that we ask him to do. Um, one of the things that Scotty did great for us last year is we played him at one position and then we moved his position about week two or three last year. And um, all he did was take that and, and he just started to perform great for us. And, you know, we kind of put him in the center of our defense, which, you know, he's always around the football and always getting to the, getting to the ball between Mike up, up front, wreck and shop, you know, between our backers who are inside backers who, who are, um, you know, one of them's coming back as well. Um, so we got some good depth there, you know, and those guys clean everything up. And if they miss, then Scotty cleans everything up, you know. So we've got like three layers in there of, of the run stopping defense that we can we, we can really stop the run with. And that's where it all starts for us. We got to be able to stop the run on defense. And, uh, and if we do that, um, then it gives us some good opportunities to pressure some people, you know, or get them in some some down and distances that, that aren't advantageous to them. And we can just play some good solid coverage and get off the field and, and give the ball back to our offense. So, you know, one of the things our defense, our, our defense has been phenomenal the past couple of years. Um, you know, we just, the, the, the one thing that we have to, we've been focusing on in the spring defensively is just, you know, when the plays are there, we have to be able to make them. And, and there was a few that slipped through our hands when we, you know, just making tackles, just, you know, tipping balls, whatever it might be that we felt that we could have um, could have made in some of the big games that, that we, you know, um, that we didn't win, you know, the beginning and the end of the year. But um, and we did a good job of that in the spring and, and uh, you know, with a lot returning on defense, I believe we're missing our two corners two starting corners and um, one inside backer and one D lineman and everybody's back on defense. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm excited for, for what we can do on defense. And, and that's been, that's been a catalyst for us for the past couple of years to be able to play great defense. So therefore give it back to our offense. And the more and more Sam's got the ball in his hands on offense, the better it is for our team. Well, again, you build off a, a, a good season, not where you want it to be, and, and pushing for that in 2023 as the schedule says you get things underway on September 2nd. You have a couple of home games, taking on Waldorf out of conference, and then league play starts, or at least the crossover portion of league play into the, into the east. St. Francis, Indiana coming to town on September 9th. A couple of more divisional or out-of-division play in the mid-states, and then homecoming September 30th. St. Xavier coming to town and it's Midwest time. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, what I've liked about our schedule that we do in the, in, in the mid state is, you know, we're allowed to go out and play a team or two if we want. Um, and then we play some crossover games with the other side, East and West. And the, the East is, is very good. We played Marion last year. We, you know, we had St. Francis, Indiana a couple of years ago, we played Indiana Westland. So you play some great competition over there in the East that East side of the conference is a bear. Um, and then hopefully that gets you ready for league play. And uh, it starts out for us with St. Xavier um, for their actually our homecoming on September 30th. And, you know, that's going to be a tough one. But every league game that we have is is going to be tough. Um, you know, one of the things about the Mid-States is, is just it's a gauntlet. And, you know, every week somebody can beat you. Um, you just, you know, you're dealing with 18 to 22-year-old kids. That's why I like to tell people I'm bald because you deal with 18 to 22 year olds all day long. Um, but, you know, so you never know if they're going to come out and play great or play bad or what the, you know, what can be. But if you come out and play bad or have, have a few hiccups in our league, you know, a, a team that maybe you're better than can, can beat you on any given, uh, any given Saturday. And, you know, that's, what's challenging for our league. It starts out September 30th within our league against St. Xavier, but there's good teams in our league as we go throughout there, you know, the St. Ambrose's, the, um, you know, the, the Roosevelt's who's in our league for one more year before they go division two Judson is, is going to be, is going to be really good as well. You know, so there's the, the teams within our league are going to be, are going to give us a handful, you know, every Saturday. And that's one of the things we did great in the mid season last year was we didn't care. We just wanted to go one and know every Saturday. And that's, you know, I always tell our, our game announcers that they, Hey, what's the goal there? And the goal is to go one and know that's it. You know, and if we do that, then, then I don't care. Um, you know, so our kids have kind of taken that on as well. They try not to look ahead. They try not to, you know, worry about the past, it, it, go one and know in the present. And if we, if we continue to do that, 
um, and focus on that, then I, I like the talent level that we'll put out there offensively, defensively, and special teams wise, you know, our return game with Scott Tumult, he's our returner is, is pretty dynamic. We've actually toyed with throwing Sam back there at times too, you know, so that could get really dynamic, um, you know, but uh, you know, it's, it's, if, if we can put together all three phases, I like us, you know, and what we can do for this 2023 season. I, I, I know you probably wouldn't do this, but I'd love a heads up on, on the, uh, the game when you plan on putting them both back there, that'd be fun to, to get to see and see what might happen with that dynamic. Uh, as you mentioned that, that kind of, of action back there in that special teams play. It well, we've fun. actually, we've actually worked on it even in practice over the past couple of years. I'm like, Sam, go down there and catch some punts some kicks. And then our offensive coordinator looked at me. He's like, "You're really not going to put him in there, are you?" And I said, <laughs> "If if we have something, if there's a kickoff to win the game, or we need something, he's going back there." And they said, "Okay, well, if it's to win the game, then it's okay." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not putting him back there regularly, but if we need a play, you know, we'll send it back there and see what happens." All right, I'll be watching for that. That that, that <laughs> should be fun. Coach Joe Curry in his 12th season, heading for the 12th season with St. Francis and the Fighting Saints, getting ready to get things going again September 2nd. Coach, we're going to follow you all this year, and, and we appreciate the time. Thank you so much for giving us time today here on the Summit. Well, once again, I appreciate you guys reaching out, and uh, you know, hopefully you guys follow us uh, throughout the fall here, and um, thank you again for all you do for St. Francis getting us out there.